Welcome. <clears throat> Factory Live Distillations, Part 8. Today's episode is on a solar power generator, a solar thermal concentrator, SDC, electric system. Conceptually, the system is quite simple. Heat from the sun is concentr concentrated by reflecting mirrors onto a collector. The heat boils water in the collector tube, and, is, and the resulting steam is used to run a steam engine. 70% of the energy in the United States is generated by steam power in large power plants which use fuel to boil water. We aim to use the sun in our case. We're presenting this video to explain the solar power generator, how it could be feasible on a small scale, and how we plan to do it. We'll be hosting the second convergence at Factory Farm to do this. Everyone loves solar energy. Did you know that the solar power coming to the Earth is 8,000 times larger than the total energy use on the entire Earth. This means that there's plenty of energy, but the trick is to capture it into a useful form. That's where solar concentrators are used. In fact, you can see videos on YouTube that show solar concentrators melting right through steel. So why doesn't everybody have a solar collector to power their house and save an average of $1,000 per year in bills, if you're talking about the United States? The reason is that harnessing solar power is too expensive by present standards, though this is now changing. Solar thermal concentrator power is actually economically feasible today in sunny areas. There are large megawatt scale utility plants in the desert regions of the United States such as the company Osra. Indeed, Osra has claimed that with its collectors combined with 16 hour thermal storage, it could provide all the power for the entire USA. At the same time, there is no small-scale version of OSRA for individual homes. We're proposing an open-source system that's feasible on this small scale. We're interested in the linear Fresnel reflector configuration, just like OSRA. We're talking of a set of 60-foot long slats, 6 inches wide, 16 of these pointed to a collector tube for 16-fold concentration. The collector tube has a parabolic shroud that adds another three times concentration for about 48-fold concentration total. This array runs east to west for 60 feet and is 15 feet wide in a north-south direction. Each slat is controlled by an individual tracking motor. Electronics today make this cheap and effective. Plus, we'll be using a steam engine. We'll be capturing 48 kilowatts of solar intercept and on paper, we're getting an overall efficiency of 47% for the collectors after detailed calculations and 15% for steam for the steam engine to get 7% overall efficiency for about 3 kilowatts of power. We are proposing a materials cost of $1 to $1.3 per watt with the former being without and the latter with off-grid battery storage. We are aware of the immediate critique of this proposition. We know that this cost figure is highly suspect to just about any critic who is familiar with basic knowledge of solar concentrators. Agreed. So here are the points that need to be achieved for us to deliver the predicted cost. First, we need to develop the single reflector slat, mirror mounting and rotation control at $7 material cost per 10 foot slat or $17 if we include the mirrors at $2 a square foot. See our work. The strategy for this is to have a small motor on each slat plus feedback electronics that sense the location of reflected light on the collector tube and make ongoing adjustments for focusing light on the collector. While a linkage of multiple slats controlled by one motor sounds easier to do, it appears from our research that it is insufficient to align all of the all of the reflectors at one time, and why bother if cheap electronics allow you to do individual control? The sure bet is individually controlled reflectors with feedback for adjustment, not a pre-programmed solar tracking path. The second point of development is the collector tube assembly. We need an explicit design that addresses radiation, conduction, and heat loss from the collection tube. Basically, we need to have the assembly trap all the heat it can in the collector tube. 
The third part is the collector tube feed water. For the solar application, valving is a solution because it requires much less energy to operate than a feed water pump. This means on an order of watts instead of hundreds of watts. This means that we'll have hundreds of watts more usable power. Another company which is currently developing a solar thermal generator is also using val valving for exactly the same reason and indeed claims that as its key to success. The fourth part is perhaps the most important, the steam engine itself. These are available for about $1400 for a 5 horsepower engine suitable for our purposes. Our goal is to produce these from scrap metal by casting and machining with digital fabrication assist for an engine cost of $150 in materials. This is very ambitious, but given that most of the scrap steel required for this costs only $10, we think that this will be feasible with digital fabrication as we discussed a bit in Factory Live Distillation Part 6. The fifth development point is electronic control for the steam engine. This may be the holy grail of high performance steam power for solar applications. The above steam engine is simplified with a major modern advancement electronically controlled steam injection. Arduino-based electronics will control a valve that controls the steam feed to optimize steam usage. This is not only a simplification but also an efficiency boost. From the research today we found that no off-shelf valves are suitable for steam engines. This means we have to develop an open source steam valve for this particular purpose. The sixth improvement that we have to do is a dedicated electrical generator that can be coupled directly to the steam engine for electrical production. We need a dedicated generator optimized for our application, so we need an open source version here as well at $150 in material costs. The seventh development point is steam cycle integration, from water injection to the collector tube, to the engine steam injection, to cooling and heat recovery this completes the project. The above materials budget is a little under three thousand dollars. In summary we have shown detailed calculations of 47 percent for collector efficiency which you can check and the steam engine performance is expected to be 16 percent based on empirical data. Altogether this comes out to a seven percent system efficiency a modest but sufficient result. The plan is therefore to get the team together for the second solar convergence at Factory Farm August 1st through the 31st 2009 for the entire month of August until the system is complete. We'll do the reflectors and collector tube and we'll have the steam engine by then for system integration. We are calling this Convergence Open Solar 2. We're assembling teams for each of the seven development areas above, plus a marketing team. Go to the wiki and join up. The basic goal at present is to demonstrate 3 kilowatts of electricity from the system for $3,000, or about $1 per watt predictions. You will be able to replicate this from detailed documentation, and we can provide key components. We also aim to provide a complete kit to you for about $4,500 or about $1.5 per watt. We aim to have the steam engine for $250 as a turnkey product and we'll see how far we'll get with, get with that. For now, tell your friends about Open Solar 2 and join one of the development teams before then. This is only a brief intro to the project. Read more on the category Open Solar 2 and solar turbine on the wiki.